Hi, everyone. This is Rob Roy with LA Wave Options, and welcome to Trade Finder Live. Happy Election Day for those of you that are uh, tuning in live. We appreciate it with uh, everything going on. I'm sure the uh, majority of people are quite interested, as I am, uh, with what's going on in the elections. If you're curious, the futures are bouncing around like crazy. Uh, they rallied after the close, then they tank negative, and then they're back up, and now they're flat. Well, actually, right now they're flat, so <laughs> back and forth. Um, I'm not sure uh, uh, what they're trading off of. There's it's a little too early to call. For those of you that are brand new with us this week, and we add new people every week, we show you this uh, wonderful disclosure disclaimer that the powers that be uh, want us to share with you. Uh, if you haven't seen this before, please take a screenshot, read it in detail uh, at your leisure. Uh, it is important, but the two primary things that they want us to share with you is number one, uh, we are not registered to give individual investment advice in the United States and any pricing that we're talking about, because we have a lot of international viewers, a lot of international subscribers are assumed to be in US dollars unless denoted otherwise. So those are two primary things. One of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, in addition to the charts and boy, the market's been uh, pretty interesting, I'm giving you a second to read through that, but uh, pretty interesting right now uh, is a little bit on the psychology of trading um, as a, Former golf pro a long time ago, still play golf a lot. Haven't played that much since the whole COVID thing happened. All the scheduled games and stuff, they all got canceled. Um, played with my son a bit and uh, played in a few tournaments here and there, but got an opportunity to play recently. And some of the guys asked me what I've been up to, what are you doing and stuff like that. And talking to them about, uh, you know, the things that we're doing with LA Wave Options and stuff. And they're like, well, why at this stage of your life are you working so hard? And let's be really clear, I work a lot of hours, but I don't work hard. Um, I love watching the market. I watch it a lot of the hours of the day, late into the morning, as a lot of you know from the uh, posts and things. I don't sleep a whole lot, but I really enjoy what I'm doing. And you heard the general thing that when you really love what you're doing, it's not really considered work. Um, but I'm not out there, you know, building buildings and doing things that uh, people that really are, you know, out there hard at work doing. So I, I don't see myself ever not doing this, honestly, because I like it. It's not like I've got some sort of targeted date that you know I'm gonna retire at this point in time. I'll probably do this till I die. Uh, just it keeps you mentally sharp and uh, it, it's just a fun thing to do. And that's one of the advantages of trading. Now, one of the things that we do put a lot of effort in is our education. Now, a lot of time, and work goes into creating those slides, creating the system, there's a method to it. We wanna educate you. So when we offer a trade alert service as we do at LA Wave Options, our goal is not to gain subscribers forever. That's not the motivation. The motivation is to have you become a subscriber, earn some money while you go through the learning process so you can do this on your own so you can trade for a living, so you can go play golf whenever you want to or whatever event that you wanna do. You don't have to punch that time clock nine to five, uh, et cetera, and be at somebody else's beck and call. That, that's the idea and that's the motivation and that's the answer that uh, uh, I gave to my, uh, my golf buddies was, you know, I, I wanna help other people be able to enjoy a better lifestyle. And that's, that's just the truth. Now, the interesting thing when we talk about the psychology of trading is Elliott Wave is a fantastic indicator of measuring fear and greed, isn't it? I mean, that's really what moves the markets. But in the world of trading, those are the two things that'll get you blown out. If you're too fearful to stay with your system, and I'm gonna explain a little bit more when I get into the closed alert that we're gonna share with you. And uh, if you're too greedy to know when to close a trade, those two things can get you in trouble. All right, so with that, let's uh, go ahead and um, take a look at where we are with the market right now. Um, talked about this 320 level. If you watched the last S&P update, hopefully you did uh, as being a, where we had this uh, flat pattern. So, and this is, it coincides with the last educational series that we did on our website was actually on flats. Flats aren't anything that I trade. Um, but as I mentioned in the course, 
uh, even though I don't like to trade sideways, other people really love to trade sideways. And whether or not you like to trade sideways or not really doesn't matter. It's still important to understand what a flat is, when it's setting up, how to identify one so that you can uh, um, take advantage of it or go through and let that be um, uh, uh, a key as far as whether or not you're setting up a zigzag, et cetera. So we finished this flat and the C wave can come down to this level, it can stop short, it can be longer. Again, all that kind of stuff is in the, uh, in the educational series. And we've bounced up. A lot of people are surprised by this. Boy, I can't tell you how many uh, text messages that I've gotten from people on how in the world is the market bouncing this close to the election with things going on. Um, well, maybe the market is just at election fatigue and it just wants this thing to be over with. Maybe the market is a smell out. Uh, what the results are going to be. I don't know. The market's pretty smart. Uh, interest rates continue to climb and uh, watch for the next S&P update because I uh, opined on a few reasons why interest rates are going up in a time when supposedly the Federal Reserve is injecting uh, ridiculous amounts of liquidity. How in the world is that happening? I've done a lot of research on that and I have some answers. So keep an eye out for that next S&P 500 uh, update. I'm going to save that for then. Um, but uh, the market um, maybe is just ready to move because we went through a wave five and we had a corrective flat and we're ready to go up. And this big zigzag pattern that we've been talking about for a very long time is still qualified. It hasn't become disqualified yet. And whether or not this was a smaller zigzag, which it became qualified and then became disqualified. And um, we shared that with our subscribers uh, in our uh, insiders meeting, we have a, a meeting where we have a QA and a uh, every week with just our subscribers and they can ask questions directly to me on any subject that they want to talk about. They can chat amongst themselves. It's really cool. Um, but we talked about that when no one became disqualified. So we knew at that point in time it was going into the, a flat, which is another corrective pattern. So we could still be going up to new highs. Uh, we'll take a look at the 10 day moving average, we did close above that today, which is interesting. Uh, up till that, and yesterday, I didn't think yesterday meant a whole lot uh, because we had gotten just a touch oversold on this C wave to the downside. So we kind of were correcting that. And maybe that's all today was too, uh, depending on what happens with the uh, um, outcome of the election, whatever. You know, everybody's talking about the coronavirus cases and the potential for. The economy to shut down. If Biden wins, he said that he's open to it. Uh, I don't think that's a good thing economically. I don't know that the virus stuff is is really that big of a factor in the market right now from just the virus standpoint, um, because we knew, right? They've been saying from the very beginning that when winter came, we were going to get another round. This is not a surprise or a shock uh, that we're moving into winter time and, and cases are going up. So I really personal believe. I uh, always try to separate what's technical patterns and what's personal belief. Um, I just don't think that has anything uh, or that's really um, factoring into the mix here. Uh, now, if Biden wins and controls, uh, we have a blue sweep or whatever, and then we start talking about shutting the economy down again, that's a whole different story. And also remember that the other qualified pattern we still have is the wave five that is not retraced 100% or excuse me, extended 100% yet, which means we could correct back down to this previous four. And this could be just a bounce from the completion of the flat. So there's a lot of things that are going on. Uh, and that to me is the, the thing that I enjoy most about Elliott Wave. I'm not gonna say the word fascinating, Steve. So just, um, sorry. Um, it's something that I really enjoy as far as the, uh, the market itself and uh, watching it. It, it just really never ceases to amaze me. After 25 years, you still learn uh, each and every day. And that's, that's why I like it so much. So with that said, um, I'm not really giving you any sort of a um, where we go from here because the market doesn't know where we go from here. We're, we're down here and we're here at uh, the 320 level and uh, we could bounce and continue to the upside from here or uh, we could uh, break down to this previous four. Uh, either one of those is still a qualified pattern. 
that's one of the reasons why in the alert service, we haven't issued a great number of alerts. And we did a pause uh, previously uh, for the same reason as when you get to the point where the market is in between two patterns, the best thing to do is the strangles. And we've done some of those. However, when you have a VIX at 35 to 40, the options analysis part of that becomes suspect as far as what kind of a, uh, a strangle do we want to put on we can't overpay for them. And speaking of that, let's uh, take a look at some of the ones that we looked at. Um, uh, last week, we had uh, um, PVH was one that we looked at for a uh, potential strangle. And today, it looks like it tried to break out. But if you really show the set of highs, we honestly made a lower high. So that's not a breakout day yet. So this one still is interesting. Some of these we've been watching for or at least I have, for the ADX to drop a little bit more. And we're getting to the point, now notice this update today, and the ADX went down. Now, we did get a move to the upside with the uh, uh, positive directional indicator. So that crossed the negative. So that's interesting. But remember, that's pretty um, responsive to what's going on in the market. Very short term on the two directional indicators. The ADX is a little bit slower to move, but the ADX had no interest in that upward move, which leads you to believe that potentially we could come back down again. Uh, but this one uh, is pretty interesting. If we get a continuum, we, I mean, we were up at 40. Now let's just take a look at that real quick while I'm talking about it's, it's 25 in that area when, you know, like this whole area here was fantastic for doing strangles. You've got elevated volatility and markets are moving things. That's a great time to put them on. Up around 40, now you're getting to the point where the majority of stocks are gonna have inflated pricing in their options. And the last thing you want is for a stock to break out of a triangle pattern, the VIX to drop, the volatility to drop, and you get the breakout and you don't make money or you lose money. Now that the VIX is coming down a bit and maybe we're gonna come fill that gap tomorrow, maybe. I mean, who knows? Now we have a triangle in the futures. So before we're done, we'll probably see it. Because remember, I look at a three minute chart. So maybe before we're finished tonight, we'll, we'll get a, a break one way or the other, but who knows? I mean, the market's gonna go well into the night with the election, and as I said, maybe past that. So maybe we close this gap and, and that would be interesting. But this, this pattern still looks, looks pretty good uh, from what we looked at last week. Here's one that I've been really itching to do. We had a bullish uh, position on this that was a really good trade. It was a, like an 88% uh, profitable trade, a directional trade on CYRX in just a few days. Uh, that was this move back here uh, that we were able to get when it broke from the pattern to the upside. And so now we've gone through, and this would be a different pattern. This would be in the volatility strategy, which would be one of the strangles uh, with this movement here and watching the ADX, you can see that the ADX dipped down and now it's starting to sneak back up. I really like when the ADX gets low, when it drops below 13, if you've been following along, that's a signal that I really look for with the uh, uh, triangles as far as the stock getting ready to break out. And then when you see the ADX start to move up, before you get a breakout of the triangle, that's positive divergence from a breakout. I wanna be clear, I'm not saying positive divergence in forecasting an upward breakout. It's positive divergence as far as a breakout. The breakout could still be to the downside. Uh, but this one looks really good and is probably gonna go out to our subscribers uh, in an alert tomorrow. It almost went today, but it's just, it's difficult to trade on election day with all the uncertainty and the volatility that uh, could come in. So just, um, you know, cool our jets and be smart. Smart money uh, makes more money and doing stupid things um, usually doesn't pay off. So uh, it may have been a, a spot conservative to wait, but as you can see, we didn't even make it to the upper trend line yet. So the move to the upside today, um, really is of no significance as far as the 
outcome of the breakout. Because this stock moves so much, the spreads are super wide, uh, meaning the spread between the out of the money call and the out of the money put that we'd be utilizing. Uh, but that one looks really, really good um, for a couple of reasons. One, the stock moves like crazy and it's a really good pattern and it's just formed larger from where we were last week, right? So we, we came back down towards the support area. And if anything, uh, over the past week, the pattern has just gotten better. So a couple other ones that we looked at, um, MGA uh, was one from back on the 20th where we said we needed, and I'm still, you know, still a little bit confused on my notes on this one where it said, I wrote that it needed a follow through day. I know I'm, I brought this up last week, still not 100% sure what was waiting for um, out of that, but it, it moved down with the market. We're at a support level and the DMI is a mess now. So that one, we just put a question mark on and we didn't count that one. So I have no idea what we were looking at there, but the, with the way the, the chart looks, I think we'll just let that one go. Uh, but here's one, uh, this is the one that we picked for last week. And I didn't send this out as an alert to the subscribers. And you go back and you look, and this is a money money quarterback and thing. You're like, well, you dummy, uh, look at that trade you missed. And you know, one of, one of my mentors always told me, you never miss a trade. You know, if you if you made a decision not to put a trade on, there's another one around the, the bend. Don't ever get caught up in, oh, I missed that trade or get negative on it. Let me share with you why I didn't send this one out as an alert, even though obviously it would have been a fantastic trade. And if some of you followed along with it, because this was one was the one, I even put a star beside it um, with, with one that I wanted to uh, to do for our uh, for our subscribers. It was that good last week. So let's go back and take a look at this um, from last week. So that would have been the 27th. So here we are. Look at the DMI. Okay, so that's when we were looking at it last week. We had this little area of support, kind of that quasi blast off launch pad effect um, that I talk about so often. The DMI looks good, but look what happened the next day. See how the positive directional indicator dropped and now the the ADX is above the negative directional indicator. Well, the ADX still had room to run because we hadn't even gotten to 30 yet and 40 is when we get uh, overbought by the ADX or the strongest part of the move is over. So that was not a concern, but the concern was that now the ADX is moving out of the range between the two directional indicators. And that's one of our signals to enter a position. So if you're staying true to your indicators, you don't enter a position when the indicators don't line up. Remember we talked about how you don't look for a reason to put a trade on. You look for reasons not to put a trade on. And if you run out of reasons not to put a trade on, that's one that you put on. Well, here was a reason not to uh, because of that. And then if we go forward each day, it just got worse. So it didn't leave the watch list, but every day, even though we're creeping up a little bit here, the DMI, is getting worse. It's showing that the buyers are losing strength, but that ADX is telling you that there's some strength to the move. So there was, you know, there was just a little bit of confusion here between the indicators, not in agreement. And then there's your blast off. And now the positive directional indicator is back above, but you don't chase that move, right? You don't chase that. And then follow it up with another move to the upside today. So congratulations if you entered that one. And um, it's another winning trade for our case study considerations for Trade Finder. And if you've been following us since we started this, you know that our track record is phenomenal, honestly, with uh, what we've been doing with our case study um, considerations here. But that's the way it goes sometimes. So the positive thing is our indicators identified a trade that ended up rocketing to the upside. When it came time to put it on, the indicators didn't line up. And, you know, we've, we've built a pretty impressive track record for a reason. And you just stay with your indicators. There's always exceptions to the rule, always exceptions to the rule. And that's what I want to share with you. That's going to be the theme that we're going to talk about when we go through and look at um, 
the um, closed case study that we did for uh, our subscribers, actually closed it today, this morning, is the one that we've closed for this week. I also wanted to, to show you this one. Uh, this was another one that we've been watching uh, as far as a potential for a strangle. And look how good that looks now. So this one and CYRX, those two look great um, as far as moving forward. And you can see that, gosh, it just watching this ADX didn't quite make it down there. It's moving down a little bit, um, but we did make it all the way down to this massive support here on October 30th and a little bit of a doji yesterday. So we move up today. That one looks really good too, as far as uh, uh, a potential strangle. So a couple of the ones that we've been watching from the past um, look like they're ready to go. As I mentioned, I would have liked to have seen the ADX get just a little bit lower, but then you give way to look at that support at 15. I mean, that is, I don't even have to draw the lines, do I, for you to see that amount of support that's sitting there. So both those look uh, really good. So that's um, the market. That's a review of uh, what we've uh, looked at over previous case studies. Now I want to show you and this is really important when it comes to a couple of things, um, exceptions to the rule and the adjustment process that we utilize at LA Wave Options. It's something that I've done over time. Uh, experience has taught me this and we're gonna do it and I'm not gonna change it. And when we get new subscribers, sometimes they look at it and say, wait, what? Um, why has that position been on so long? So I thought I would go through and, and, and share the uh, reasoning before you. You can see that we returned uh, nearly 43% on this trade. And you think, well, that's great. But look how long it was, over a year since this alert initially went out. And here is the dot plot. Now note that there was some time here where nothing really was going on. You have to let patterns set up. So we know historically that Elliott Wave is right a high percentage of the time, but it's not right 100% of the time. And the fact that we moved to the downside here, so that meant this was one of those that the pattern didn't uh, work the way it was supposed to. And then a little bit of a breakout there and then came back down. So another one that didn't break uh, the way it was uh, supposed to. So now we've defined the odds a few times here. Well, when you're looking at that, when you've defined the, defined the odds, when you've got something that has an extremely high percentage of accuracy, that just means that the odds are becoming more and more in your favor. It's another reason to stay with the adjustment process. Follow the patterns. If the pattern changes, just change with the pattern. So instead of a straggle that we initially started with, we went long and look at this. That's the power of Elliott Wave once the pattern does what it's supposed to do. Uh, which is what occurred. And we rocketed to the upside. Now take a look at this. I wanna share this with you because it's really important. Um, going back to the original entry over a year ago, people that were our subscribers that have been in it that long still generated a 42, nearly a 43% return. Those that may have entered in July, in the middle of the pandemic, that's over a 200% return. Those that may have gotten in in October, because we're adding subscribers all the time, was nearly a 350% return. So when people are like, well, I don't wanna follow the adjustments, I know in the alerts that are sent out that this is okay to follow for those that may not have been in the original alert. So subscribers that we've added since then, so subscribers that we've had that have been in this since the beginning enjoyed a better than 40% return. How many places are you getting over 40% in a year anyway? Now, you know, I obviously don't want to be in a position this long, but over 40% is still a good return in a year. Um, obviously, we strive to do that better than, than a year, but it's certainly not performing anything else that's out there. And then if you came along and you followed this and weren't in the beginning, this was a home run for those people 
with the amount of money that was made off of those last two alerts. So we managed this really, really well from the very initial position, which was a strangle as you can, or a, a put spread. Uh, no, excuse me, that's the adjustment. Let me go to the original entry, clicked on the wrong button. So here was the initial chart pattern, which was a really nice Elliott wave symmetrical triangle. It was a good looking pattern and it just didn't break um, the way they expected it to. That was the original failure of the pattern, took too long, et cetera. And then we went through the adjustment process as I showed you, and we had a period of time where we needed to wait for the pattern to set up. So you wait for it. So where would you have exited this position if you were following a system of, all right, well, if it doesn't work, get out. Would you have just lost your $240 when it didn't break out and said, that's it? Would you have just taken the $480 hit and said, that's a loser? Or would you have stayed with it, trust your system, follow the patterns, and turn what was a losing trade, which we've done so many times. If you look at all the trade record and everything we have is posted on our website, everything. So I'm showing you this one as this is not the ideal scenario, right? You don't enter a trade expecting to be in the trade for over a year. But I wanted to share with you how we do things, the adjustment process, trust the pattern and when, when a pattern is defying the odds, that's not when to run away from it. That's when to stay with it and commit further to it. Does that make sense? So that's what we did and it worked out fantastically well. So anyone, even the original people that were in this alert made a nice return. Some people made a fantastic return. So when you look at this and you think, well, you know, I don't wanna keep doing the adjustment process I'd rather put money into something different. Well, every time there's an adjustment, that's like a, you know, that's a new situation that's been set up. We might be adjusting to the original pattern, but, you know, why shy away from that? Because you're adjusting one position that was losing versus starting some new position. It doesn't make any sense to me uh, to do that. So um, we don't give up. Patience. Patience is so important in the world of trading. If the pattern is still available and it's still worth trading, then stay with it and don't just run away from it just because you were losing. So um, just wanted to share that with you, a position that was not good for a while, but instead of just wringing our hands and walking away from it, let the pattern set up. Trust your indicators and also realize that now the odds have really moved in your favor over time, even more than they were from the time of the initial alert. So the odds are it's gonna follow the LA wave pattern is, is the point. That's just general stuff there uh, in addition to LA wave analysis. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our pre-computed list here. Uh, for those of you that may be new, the way this works is this charting system that we use is called uh, Private Source. And for our LA Wave Options subscribers, we have these pre computed searches here, which are basically the indicators that I look at. So if you're new tonight, basically what we're going to do is what I do every day we go through and we look at the listing. And it's fascinating that it's only taken two days of the market to bounce off of that 320 level because um, just if I didn't highlight it enough, if we don't hold 320, if this is just a bounce off of this and we break below there, um, we're coming back here. We're going to break 300 and probably in a pretty short period of time. I mean, that could happen tomorrow or the next day, depending on what goes on. Uh, with the election, et cetera. Or maybe we blast off as people are like, like all the, my phone blowing up today, like what in the world is going on? How is the market up today? Well, the market's up today. You know, we're bouncing off support. It doesn't, it's not that shocking, honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that everybody expects a contested election. I just wanted to re make sure that I was clear on that, that if this 320 doesn't hold, then 
we're going down to the previous four probably in a short period of time and maybe for a longer period of time, uh, meaning that we could move into a bit of a bear market for a while. But just on those two days, we've got five potential ones to look at. Here's Bank of Hawaii again. Um, here, there's another financial, three financials. So that makes sense. And there's also another uh, financial that uh, I'm looking at. It's not on this list right now. So I'm anxious to see these uh, that may go out to our subscribers tomorrow as well. Uh, that was on previously uh, because rates are moving up and the financials are coming in. Uh, we had one on uh, TCBI, which was Texas bank shares, which worked out extremely well. Um, that one moved to the upside nicely uh, off of the fact that um, the financials are surprising people. Uh, with the interest rates moving up, that's the one area that does well. It's not good for the economy, not with the situation that we're in right now, but it's great for the um, financials. And it's if you're long the dollar, it's good for the dollar. I'm going to cover that again in the next update on foreign countries that are buying our dollar and why they're doing so because of the rates. So um, stay tuned for all that stuff. Been doing a lot of research on that. I left you with the question, something's going on. So I always like to know what's going on. So when I say something like that, it, it makes me curious as to, well, let's go figure out what's going on. All right, so here we have a, now there's the wave four correction right at the 23.6% level. This one isn't exactly the 45 degree angle move, but it kind of is. You can see it's it's moved up and it's it's corrected a little more than I like to see on the way up. You know, I normally like just that 45 degree angle that doesn't leave this arrow too much, but in a way, that's the angle of the ascent. The DMI, uh, it had a pretty strong move. A little bit of this sideways correction here, right to the 23% level. Elliott preferred for a corrective move to get that correction. Now 23.6 is a FIB level, so it's gonna act as support. And that's just something that we have to be aware of. Elliott's preference was a 38.2% correction. Uh, as far as feeling confident that we're going to move to the upside from there, we got a little bit of a doji here. Uh, it's materials, um, which could be doing well um, with, with gold and silver trying to uh, creep back to the upside. Now the ADX, uh, it broke below 25. Would have loved to have seen it get below 20 before it started curling back up. This close to the previous highs, it would be easy to say, especially with where the market is right now, I'm not sure we're gonna find a directional trade that I would be willing to say, Let, let's do that. I mean, on election night, I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, but sitting right here, uh, if you broke above that wave three high, then this is where we're going to the wave five target. So I think just be a little patient uh, let's let's let it prove to us that it can break that resistance of the previous three with a 23% correction. It's still in a strong upward move. Um, so this is kind of, I would imagine a lot of these moves here were 23% on the way up as well. And that wave four will just move uh, as we get uh, a deeper correction at some point in time. So it looks pretty good, but I think we just let's, let it show us that it can break above that 153 level. And then we can look to uh, to maybe do something. So uh, watch list. And so you will put that one on the watch list to keep an eye on. But it's I don't think it, it makes sense to do that today. Now, the financials are going to be really interesting. So let's look at these. Yeah. Nice, that moving to the upside there with the um, ADX looks really good. We're in a set of corrective moves, so let's draw them ourselves. That's why I turn the ABCs off. You can have those on if you want. Um, I turn them off to use these tools. So uh, 
All right, so this is really good LA weight stuff. The reason I said ah is we're pretty close to an extension level. So we're gonna have to break that and go to 161.8. But the good thing is that, so right at the 38% FIB level, so that means you have a 61.8% target. Well, it got there uh, in this one day, came down, tested the previous FIB level. This is just as classic of LA weight Fibonacci stuff as it gets. And you just see this over and over and over again. So it tested the previous FIB level. That's what it's supposed to do if you're gonna get an extended C wave. And we're headed up to that 100% extension. I think there's a fantastic chance that we go there, but we're trading at 33 and it's only 35 is the target. What you would wanna see is this look to uh, potentially go to a further extension level up to the 161.8% level. That's where we would wanna see uh, this one go. Now you've got a chance for a pretty decent trade. And the way that ADX is just building and building and building steam and there's separation between the two directional indicators, that could easily happen. Uh, on top of this, we had, you know, this move here. If we go back to that day, you can see that uh, with where it closed in the 10 day moving average, we've gotten a little bit overbought. So we needed to come back down, correct that move. So it came right back to the area where the 10 day moving average was and then bounced back to the upside. So that one looks really good. Just is that going to be the end? We've already hit our target. So that's important to remember that it's already hit the C wave extension target or the C wave original target. Now we're moving up to the extension target. The question is, do we further extend to 161.8? Let's see if we can find something on here that may look um, a little bit better, better from a trigger, but that doesn't look bad at all. South State, I think that's a bank too, isn't it? I think this is a financial as well. Look at that pattern. That is, love this pattern. Let me show you why. So here's another, see, that, see how the ADX dropped below 20? That's what I prefer. And now we're moving up. We had a little kiss of the lines here with the negative directional indicator, and then they turn back and you've got just, you see that little triangle right there? So complex move there. Let's see how far this corrective move is here. So we had a complex A, which is interesting. So 38%, this one is, where are we at? 64, 68. Yeah, a little bit more of a movement to the upside. That one looks really good too. I don't know what the options look like on this. So let's take a look. We're gonna start sharing this stuff with you in the not too distant future. When I go over to look at the options, a lot of you ask, what am I looking at? Primarily looking at open interest, um, volatility, the width between the spreads, just general option knowledge uh, with the Greeks, but there's, Man, there's not a lot of liquidity here in this one. So that's gonna, yeah, spreads are astronomically wide. So when I say that, I mean, there's a bid of 570 and ask of $7. And you can say, well, that's not so bad. But then the next one, 520, 1450, 970, 1940, and unless something changes with that, um, that's tough and that's frustrating when, when you, because that is such a good pattern. I think there's a super high percentage chance that goes to that 61.8% level really soon. A 5% move up today. Unless the options, unless the spreads tighten up, we've talked about this before. This is probably a terrible day to be looking at um, option positions because with it being election night, I mean, I haven't, Done. I haven't looked at a whole lot of those. I don't do that. Uh, if you've been here before, you know that when we do this, I like you to see the live thing. It's not pre-scripted. You're seeing these charts at the same time I am. I haven't pre-looked at anything because I don't think that's educational if I just pre-script stuff and regurgitate a bunch of stuff to you. That's not helpful. You want to hear the thought process, et cetera, to go through things. But tonight, I mean, just think of it this way. The market makers leave. We've got election night. Nobody knows what's going to happen tonight. Can you not imagine that the market makers have widened the spreads on a majority of stocks because who knows what they're going to come into uh, tomorrow morning? I think that just makes sense. 
that's why I'm saying tonight might be a really rough night to try to pick a, a case study. Um, I'm leaning towards one of those uh, strangles that we looked at in the very beginning. I'm just fascinated that there was anything on the bullish search. Uh, there hasn't been with um, just two updates. Bank of Hawaii. So pretty much other than Vulcan materials, everything has been financials. And this one looks really good again. Look at that. DMI just continues to march higher. When did we look at this one before? Was, was this one an options problem too? Because I know we looked at this before. It's thinly traded too. It's not nearly as bad as the other one though. So you're probably gonna be trading against the market makers, which means you're gonna get filled close to the ask. Y'all know not, not to pay the ask and sell at the bid, right? You look for a midpoint and then work from there. What I used to do was pull an order. This is totally off the subject, but it's option stuff because you don't want to buy at the ask and sell at the bid. You don't have to. Um, you start at the midpoint, the midpoint between the bid and the ask. And what I would do is if they didn't fill me at the bid or ask, and then maybe I moved it up one, but you don't move your order. You close that order out and then put in a new order. Because if they think they've got you, if they think you're going to chase an order, like they think you want this order so bad they're going to let you continue to move up the price because you haven't gotten filled yet. Because every time they do that, they're making more money. Remember, that's what they make. The spread is what the market makers get paid. So if they feel like they can get some more money out of you, they're going to. So um, I would move it once. And if they didn't take the second, the second order, I would pull the order for an hour or two. One, make them think that now nah, I don't want it that bad. And now they're thinking, yeah, I could have gotten that order. I could have made that money and then let it go. And then if it appears again, then they're more apt to, from a psychological standpoint, they're more apt to, all right, he may pull this all together. If we don't fill him, let's go ahead and fill this. So it's a cat and mouse game with the market makers, but it works. Try it. Just be willing to walk away from the order. You put it in and, you know, maybe touch a little bit towards the ask if you're buying something. If they don't feel that, pull the order and disappear for a bit and then come back and watch what happens. It's just little silly things, but it, it's, it works. This is just an amazing pattern here because we got zigzag heaven here. Let's see where the 161.8 is because we've already come down and tested that. And then we'll see where that next zigzag goes. All right, so we're almost there, but let's look at this zigzag. So we have a complex C wave, which means we could potentially go past this 161.8. Let's put the 261.8 on there as well. So we can see where that may go. So that would be up here and let's look at this zigzag. Really good. So the 100% extension there, 67. So it's just which of these two is gonna work out. You've already got an extended C wave on the original zigzag. The next one, the likelihood, the higher percentage chance is that we go there and that could be the end of it but it's, pretend, it's possible to go up here, but you'd be getting greedy if you, if you stayed past this when you've already gotten to 161.8. I can tell you the probability of an extended C wave going to 261.8 drops dramatically. Um, it happens. I mean, we've had a few of them lately with this uh, volatility, but that percentage drops down a bit of it going that far. So I really like to trade the 100% and the extension to 161.8. Those happen a lot. But then going to the 261.8, that's a bit, bit rougher. But uh, here with this to the 100% extension looks highly likely with that, with that DMI the way it is now. 
Hate this doggone gap, though. Golly. We'll see what happens with that in the morning, um, whether it comes back to, to fill that gap. Maybe it will and, um, and give us an even better fill. We might be just a touch overbought and a little, just a tiny bit overbought with the 10 day moving average right here as well. So uh, we'll see. Um, golly. Um, it, it's still thinly traded, but the spreads are better. If, if I remember right, they're better than they were last time. Pinnacle Financial Partners, they, all these charts are gonna look the same, right? They're all, they're all trading off what's going on with interest rates and the fact that the financials that are reported already are reporting this. So here you go, I mean, it's just zigzags everywhere. 38%. Look at this. Just, I mean, how many times do we look at this? Um, hopefully you've already seen it before I show it to you, but I'm gonna give you the 161.8% extension on this one too. Well, look where we went. Right to the 100%, what do we do? Test the previous FIB level, and then you're off to the extended level. That's the rules. So when we talk about this and we do this in our education on the website, we talk about rules versus guidelines. Rules that don't get violated. Guidelines are things that happen a high percentage of the time, but it doesn't mean a pattern becomes disqualified if it doesn't do it. So we talk to you about those things in the education. Again, our goal is to educate you to become a trader on your own. Sure, we'd love to have you as a subscriber, but you know the idea is for you to learn to do this uh, yourself. And that's the motivation. And I'll tell you another real quick story. The reason that I got into trading I know you probably don't care, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, when I was a golf pro, my dad worked for RCA and he uh, RCA got bought out by a company called CSR, Computer Sciences Raytheon. So he got a lump sum retirement and he asked me, where should I put it? And I had uh, a guy that I played golf with, which was a broker. He was an acquaintance. He wasn't really a friend, but he was an acquaintance. He made a ton of money as a broker and thought he was doing well. Go see that guy. So he goes, my dad was super conservative and he said, I want it in something fixed and please don't put it all in one place. So what do you think that guy did? He put it all in one place. He put it in an insurance company uh, that was uh, in trouble. So they were paying a super high commission to brokers because they needed money to come in. Of course, the insurance company goes under. My dad lost all his money and I felt terrible. I felt horrible. And that was when I left the golf business and moved into the financial business because I was like, you know, the people are out there. My dad can't be the only one that this kind of stuff has happened to. That's what motivated me to move into the world of finance. So anyway, um, this looks really good to move up to this level. And um, we'll see what the options look like here. I still think we're on the strangles though, but um, I'm just really surprised how good some of these patterns look. Well, this one has more liquidity, but the spreads are wider. Bank of Hawaii is going to be the best one. This one has more liquidity, but wider spreads. Makes no sense. Again, maybe tomorrow some of that changes that just some of the, some of the um, stocks that trade a lot, they just, they just blew the spreads open. They're going home tonight. Again, not knowing what we're going to face when we move in um, or when they come in tomorrow. Let's look at the one corrective one, Alibaba. I don't know if you saw that, but yikes. Not a good day for uh, Alibaba. They're dealing with a lot of political stuff going on in China right now with uh, Jack Ma. So I don't know if you got, I'll spare you that story, but it did make it to its wave five target. And isn't that interesting that the second it hit that tap box, the second it got there, then we came down Today again was, was news driven. And I think you wanna see how that plays out over the next day or two. It is encouraging that it's coming down to fill this gap. It almost got there. So maybe on a little bit of weakness tomorrow, um, that could be interesting because it is, it is oversold. And then let's look and see what kind of a zigzag setup that we may have here. That's the displaced moving average, by the way, if you're wondering what that line is.
So that's a 70% correction. So can't trade the zigzag. It's disqualified. So um, yeah, I guess we have to look at the potential for that one coming back down to the previous four. This one may not, may not be done going down. And that makes a lot of sense too, doesn't it? Because first of all, you have the Ellie wave corrective pattern back to the previous four, but you have a ton of support there. So um, I think we caught this triangle here on this breakout. I know we, uh, we had a, um, a strangle in the past on it, <clears throat> but the move back down here to the previous four is, is where this one is likely going. All right, so I'll get to some questions here. Rambled on a little bit longer, but um, we can look at WKHS and I think the CYRX makes a lot of sense right now. So those are going to be our those are going to be our case studies for tonight. I don't think it makes any sense to do anything directional even though the entire financial sector is moving to the upside, which it always helps when, when you have a whole sector behind you. And that's just one last thing that I want to make a note of here. Um, it does matter when you see these, it tells you that when there's so many financials, it tells you that entire sector is moving to the upside. And it is because rates are moving up. But what we ended up getting here uh, with the search results are the best of the sector. You know what I'm saying? We're getting the best looking charts within a sector that's moving to the upside. So it's like, these are the ones that you want to focus on. And instead of just like the XLF or some ETF along those lines, you get a much better return out of these. So especially it's really encouraging when you see a whole sector of stuff and you pick the best one, which was, which was BOH. But um, now the futures are back up again. Who knows? You know, it's going to be a fun night, though. And it's going to be, I don't know that I'll go to bed tonight, really. So it could, uh, could be one of the college-bound all-nighters all type of thing. All right, some questions. I'm happy that the gap, I am happy that this gap was filled. Um, Shepard, yes, um, you are correct. And it's nice that that one is filled, and, and we're in pretty good shape now, um, except – way down here, which we could go down, but that could be a, a bit further. But the fact that that was filled from here is uh, is encouraging. I, I just can be super interested to see what happens with, uh, with where we are. Plug, P-L-U-G, you wanna look at? Uh, yeah, that would have been fantastic yesterday, wouldn't it, James? Goodness, look at this. Where's the ADX? Yeah, see, the ADX wasn't low enough. That's why it didn't show up on the search. But absolutely fantastic uh, descending triangle. So you have, you have your breakout day and a confirmation day. So this one is a confirmed upward breakout. The problem that you have, I'm sure you probably guessed already. Well, it's not that overbought, just a tiny bit overbought. And then this gap again. But if you if you get a chance to get in this one a little bit lower, I think that's that would be a pretty good entry. Certainly hate to chase it after that move today and with a gap. But it's a confirmed breakout. It's likely going higher. Um, just that was a good chart. And then... IP, international paper. The stuff blows me away. You think that everything is so electronic right now. It's a good looking pattern. More zigzag heaven here. Look at that. Right to the 100% extension. Right back to the 61.8. How many times have we seen this? This wasn't even on our search. This is one of the ones y'all suggested. So I don't, if you're not a believer in Ellie Wade, I guess you are because you're here, but if you're not now, I don't, I don't know what gets you there. Um, but it's perfect. I mean, it's as classic as it could get. Um, two good charts. Thanks for bringing those up. 
let's see what the DMI looks like. So you know, we, we need this ADX to continue back to the upside with it. If you wanted to be a touch conservative, let it break this wave three high here. Um, but it's run right up to it with, uh, with some authority. It's not that much overbought. They could break through it tomorrow or maybe it pulls back. Tiny little gap there it needs to be filled, but super good looking chart. Funkage wants uh, UPS. So it came back down to the support. I think we talked about this before, the support area here. Uh, when we looked at it, 23%. This is really scary though. But again, it, there's no timetable on when gaps get filled. It could be well down the road. We got one above it to get filled now. It's trying to find support here and move back to the upside. So it, um, yeah, that one was just so far overbought. But that stuff's getting corrected now. We've looked at this one a few times. I don't know if you're still long it or if you're looking to get into it or what, but um, it, it held this area at 160, which it needed to hold. Got down there in a hurry. It's trying to bounce to the upside off of it. Um, I think what happens in the market uh, has a lot to do with this. It will probably be insulated if the economy shuts down because everybody started buying stuff online when they shut everything down before. So I don't know that that scenario hurts UPS. It needed this correction. We needed to correct the DMI and um, it looks much better now. Summit materials, well, that would go in line with the Vulcan one that we saw before. He sits up after hours, unless they report earnings. Yeah, let's take a look. Oh, it spiked after hours, but it's giving it back. Um, we'll see how that um, goes into, into tomorrow's opening. It fell down, it's filled this gap. We got an earnings report. It needs to hold this level. It needs to hold 18. So that's, that's your trigger there. IWM, which we have a alert on. Really nice move to the upside today. There's your island reversal right there. Gap down, few bars, gap up. It leaves these floating on an island between two gaps. That's what an island reversal means. So yeah, Paul, you're right. Um, that is an island reversal pattern. And we, we've talked about this before. If the market was gonna go up and make that next leg higher, if it's gonna fulfill, fulfill that zigzag and hit new highs, the rotation has occurred to where the I, IWM, the small caps, will lead it. They've been, they haven't been leading it. The big tech has. Um, the rotation has occurred. And wow, the market just sprinted to the upside. Futures just went up 40 points like that. Yeah, it's just going to be a fascinating night. Um, oh, Steve, doggone it. Hope you won your bet. But here we go. Um, jumping to the upside here. We'll see if uh, if we can break above these highs and how far. The, the, the issue with an island reversal is it doesn't last forever. It, it normally gives you a short-term move and then you get some follow through from it, but it's not like we're gonna island reversal and then run forever. And there probably will be some back and filling. Um, if I had my preference, I'd rather see a close that gap tomorrow and then take off and, and break through there. 
But if the futures continue to rocket like they are now, then it might even gap up again tomorrow. But um, yeah, that was, that was a good day for that one. I look at the E-mini futures. So this is the ESZ20. So it's the December E-mini futures contract is the one I look at. And on a three minute chart, which you can trade with LA Wave too, by the way. Uh, here's, here's a story to finish with, with on the, the degrees, with LA Wave breaking into degrees. Uh, I had a friend that was flying through Orlando and his uh, plane got delayed. And so he's like, hey, can, can I come over? And his plane was next plane was flight was scheduled hours later. So he came over and we started looking at the futures. He was a futures trader. And so we started looking at LA Wave on the three minute chart and we made a few trades in a row and I was just showing him stuff. And then he's over on his computer hitting a bunch of buttons. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm putting those trades on. It's like, I was just showing you stuff. I, the intent was not to put in, I'm putting them on. And they worked really well. So needless to say, he canceled his flight, spent the night, and now he trades Ellie Wave on a futures chart just because of that. And you, know, you just never know because his flight got delayed and he came and we spent time together going through charts and, and seeing things. But point is it can break down to smaller time frames, and um, you can trade currencies, futures, whatever you want. It's all the same stuff. It's just patterns. It's all the exact same stuff. All right, so I think that's all the questions, and um, we're right at our time limit anyway. Thanks for your attention tonight. Um, I invite you to come along with us, be a subscriber, um, kick the tires, give us, a, give us a go, see what you think, because man, is it going to be a fascinating time right now. We've got an elevated VIX. Good time to be an options trader. Really good time. Take advantage of it. So thanks, everybody. Appreciate your attention. And uh, let's go see what's going on with the uh, election. And we'll have a whole lot more to talk about next week when we get together, won't we? All right. Thanks for your attention, everybody. Appreciate it. Have a great week.